Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another Building Microservices in Go video. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you how to implement validations. Before discussing about the actual validations, I want to give you a refresher of the project layout that I have been using in a while because this is going to be impacting the way we're going to be focusing on the validations themselves. First of all, we have a domain, you know, remember the domain driven design and the onion architecture. I'm actually combining the two of them to define the project layout that I want to use, you know, the folder structure basically. So I have a domain around that domain. I have a service which includes domain services and application services basically the use cases that apply to my domain that happen to be using the types in the domain and finally i have an infrastructure package that it lives sort of on around those two different types uh, rather packages in practice this is implemented in the uh, microservices to do uh, example that i have again i will be leaving the link in the description this way. So I have an internal package that defines all the entities or types uh, associated to my domain, which will be the to the microservice. There is a service package that defines the rule associated to specific use cases that happen to apply to the types that I have defined in my internal package. For now, because it's a really simple project and I'm uh, educational project is just basically creating tasks but it will become it's going to become much more complex in the near future finally I have a collection of repositories that if you compare to what I have right there will be the infrastructure package that basically are uh, your typical data stores like memcached postgres rapidmq kafka and those kind of things but also I have an UI sort of like a package that applies to all the external packages that we're using for giving access to our customers, which is in the, in the example that we have implemented so far would be the REST API, or if you think about it, it will be the year, an, a gRPC service, for example, or maybe a CLI uh, application, or perhaps you're implementing domain-driven, uh, uh, not domain, event-driven design, event-driven architecture rather, and then you're receiving events and therefore you're, you're doing some sort of a UI access outside of your typical um, request response. So let's look at the code and I will show you what I mean. Specifically, we are going to be focusing on one action of all the CRUD actions that we have, which will be the create a task action. And we're going to be looking at the different validations and why I'm making those decisions. So I'll talk to you in a few seconds. Like I said, we're going to be looking at the create a task method and in particular how that works on each one of the layers that we have implemented. Remember, we have the infrastructure UI, which will be the REST API. Then it goes through the service that invokes the specific repository, which will be PostgreSQL. And finally, it also gets the domain type involved. So I want to show you first the Swagger UI that we have been using for a while. Typically, when this is um, working, we are going to be creating, let's say, description, description, and then we're going to be defining, uh, you know, a priority. Let's say we create it and give us a 201 that indicates the task was created. And if you look at the output, everything is fine. Your typical, you know, implementation with this uh, when you're creating a service like this. Now, like I said, everything will be linked in the description of this video. Feel free to clone the repo and play with it. I want to show you first the implementation that I have. Let me clone mute this thing. And first of all, we have the task.go uh, file that implements the task handlers for creating, deleting, updating, and getting tasks. The important thing about this is that when we are dealing about, uh, uh, with validations, we need to define, um, I like to define those validations in the context, hey, the validation that is coming explicitly when we are receiving data from a layer above us and implicitly when we are transforming values that are coming from one of the other layers and we're trying to do something with them. A concrete example will be again going and looking at the create task request will be hey I'm going to be creating a request and I'm going to be jumping to, into this create method and I'm going to be doing some sort of encoder calling the decoder and decode the, the JSON payload that I have. And depending on the actual payload, it will be accepting it or not. That will be some sort of a concrete validation 
implicit in the context of this layer. Now, explicitly, I want to show you the priority that I have right here. If you remember, when we implemented the task, uh, we have a priority that happens to be a int 8. So uh, we are not using an int 8 in on the HTTP REST layer, but rather we're using a string. And this is because we want to give a better user experience to our customers. So the whole point of doing this is that, hey, we are transforming the value that we are receiving into the domain type, and therefore we are validating that value as well. And again, if we receive a something that is not applicable to, for example, dates, those will fail. But we are not explicitly defining some sort of a validate method or some sort of like a validation uh, struct tags in the types that we're defining right here. Everything happens behind the scenes, and this is one way to do it. And this is the whole point of this kind of data transfer object not types that are not objects, but data, the DTOs kind of thing in, in other programming languages that are only used for passing in information between different layers. Now, this is important because when we're dealing with different types in different layers, the validations will apply again explicitly or implicitly. Let me show you another example which include, includes the service. So when we receive a message from the HTTP REST um, package, we pass down that to the service, and the service invokes an explicit validation, which in this case will be, if we look at the create, we are defining here a params validate. And I want to show you something, this is not typically something I recommend, but I do it from time to time, depending on the business requirements, and from uh, in some cases, I like to define a type that explicitly uh, defines validations for that action. For example, uh, in our business requirements, the create programs is used for creating tasks. And in our business requirements, we are saying, we are being told that if the priority is none, when we are creating a new task, you need to fail. And you still need to apply whatever logic that you had before. So validations, in this concrete example, we'll be taking a rule that applies to the command that we're trying to achieve, which in this case will be creating a new task, and then applying everything else that we already have in the domain type, and then assign it or uh, apply it, like I said, apply it to what we're trying to do here. So like I said, we have priority none. If it fails, uh, it will return a message back to the user. Let me show you an example. So I have a priority description. This was created. Let's try um, this leave the description. And if I do a none here, what is going to happen is it's going to be going through this uh, logic that I defined before. It's going to go through the service. The service is going to be receiving a create params type. And then it's going to be triggering this validation that I have right here that says, hey, it must be set. So it's right here. So it's trying to say, hey, if you want to create something, you need to set the priority to something that is none. Let's say I use low, and for whatever reason, I go into the validation that is going to be triggered by the description or by the domain type, which is something that is coming. Oops, I didn't mean to do that, but rather I meant to go to the task validate uh, rules that I have right here. So I'm using this library called OZO. OZO. Uh, validate that includes a, a bunch of different rules, but they don't use a struct tags like other packages. Uh, like for example, there is a package called Go Playground that happens to be using a struct tags, and then you can add the validation to the struct tag uh, to the fields using a struct tags. I personally like prefer using this. You may have your own opinion, but I think in the end, the whole point is to define validations in your domain types, which is again not always the case. But if you try, you do try. To do your best when defining validation domain rules validations that apply to your domain in the original entities that happen to be defined in your in your domain package which will be internal in this case so what is going to happen is going to be triggering this require validation which will indicate hey description is required it cannot be blank or something similar along those lines so it, it says a hey, description cannot be blank 
And the cool thing about this package is it's really simple to implement custom validations. Like for example, priority is still doing uh, what I was doing before, implementing a validate uh, method, uh, which is right here. So if your type implements the validate method or this interface, which is validate error method, it will consider that as a validation and then make and uh, go through the whole process, the whole sequence and make sure that everything is valid. Now, we're talking in the context of uh, we're receiving a value from the HTTP layer where it's going into the service. The service is calling explicitly again, validate, and then it goes into the repository. And when it goes into the repository, which I have in, let me open service task, and I will show you create. So I have the validate that I was just describing a while ago. And when I call create, in our repository, what is going to happen is it's going to be triggering whatever other validations I have on that side of the system, the service. So with Postgres, what I decided to do is not only define a way that I can store my data much more efficiently, and because again, going taking the example of priority, uh, the way I had it defined is in the migrations when I want to simply create the table, I decided to define an enum in Postgres that happens to be equivalent to the values that I have in the internal task uh, type. So there is a non, low, medium, and high priorities, but those are enums in the context of Postgres. So what's happening here is that when we are calling create, if for whatever reason the params that I'm receiving from one of the layers above or you know around the the postgresql package if those do not contain a type that matches the database type it will fail but we are again we are not explicitly calling any validate type or method right here is literally when we are converting the type the domain type into something that we should be expecting for postgres when the actual ex execution of that happens when they actually insert the insert command happens into the SQL database that is when it's going to be triggered so let's jump into the conclusions because we want to just go you know run all of this one more time so validations are sort of like a simple concept to implement when you're building microservices but really the problem in my opinion will be when you're trying to communicate concrete messages to layers above of where the message was or the error was actually triggered. So if we have an error, you know, let's say when we're trying to insert into a database, how can we convert that into something that can be useful to somebody above us, the customer that is actually using the HTTP endpoint. In the code that I was showing you, there's a custom type that I was describing also during the errors video that I recorded a few months ago. I will be leaving the link in the description as well, so feel free to check it out. Where which you're including a code that indicates what kind of error happened, and not only that, but I also added in the code something that indicates if this is a validation error, render and append a field to the message that we're returning back to the client in the JSON payload, so the the user knows how to react. Maybe display it you know, a warning or maybe a label around the field that they are trying to use or something like that. This is uh, tricky, to be honest with you, but truly the, the best way I can think about it, again, my recommendation would be always use domain types for defining business rules. If there is a need to specific, specify more rules applicable to, for example, the data store that you're using, add those there or maybe the fields or the types that you're going to be defining for your customers, like the HTTP layer, define those there, and don't try to combine everything into one entity or one type that lives under the domain package. Again, hopefully you find everything, you found all of this useful. If you have any comments or any questions, please let me know. I will talk to you next time. Take care and stay safe. See you.